video, I'm going to be going over the absolute basics of how to use animation in Blender. Today's video is going to be pretty basic. I'm just going to be going over the very simple stuff in Blender and how to use animation. So, with all that being said, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so as soon as you get into Blender, you'll be here at this page. And if you don't know how to use Blender and you're planning on doing animation, I recommend watching my beginner's guide to Blender first. But the first thing I'm going to go over is keyframes. So basically, all keyframes are, that's like the whole point of animation. So I'm just going to drag this up right here. So this is our timeline and this shows all the keyframes that we have at the moment. So to set up keyframe, I click on my cube and I press I. And then it shows this keyframe menu, okay? So I can select all these different options. Right now, I'm just going to select location and rotation, okay? That rhyme. As soon as I press that, you see this little... Um, yellow diamond right here and you see that the transform tab all of my values have turned green okay this means that there's a keyframe in play right now so let's say I want to set a keyframe for my cube to move like five meters okay all I would do is first move the slider on the timeline to like like five frames yeah I'll do five frames and then move so G and Y five enter that'll move my cube five Okay, but now as you can see, there's no diamond here and this is a different color. Okay, so what I want to do to set a keyframe is just the same thing. Press I, location and rotation, and now the keyframe has been set. So if I'm going to go nice. back to zero and press play, it moves. So that was just a very simple way to show how keyframes work. I can also do the same thing with rotation. So I'm going to move the second keyframe just a little bit. Hold up, this thing's tripping. Two hours later. Okay, so I moved my second keyframe to 10 and now it's just stretched out a little bit. And during this keyframe here, I'm also going to rotate the cube. Okay, so I've already set a keyframe here at frame 10. So what I could do to change what the actual keyframe is, is just go over to here, this transform tab, and I want it to rotate. Okay, so I'm going to make it do a 180 rotation on the Z axis. So put 180 and simply press I rotation and it sets the keyframe again okay so I'm gonna reset it and let's see how it looks so I press play and you see it starts spinning as it moves one thing to note is to make sure that you move your slider on the timeline before you move your actual object so let's say I had a keyframe right here right location rotation and then I moved my object down like here I did some crazy stuff okay, no, whatever no, 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 right? no, 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 and then I move my slider it's just gonna go right back because in Blender, when you set a keyframe and there's no other keyframes after that, it's going to stay where it's at. And then when you add a keyframe, it's telling it to do otherwise, okay? So make sure you always move the slider and then move your object. Now that we've gone on the absolute basics, I'm gonna show you guys the animation tab. So when you click on this, it looks just a little bit more complicated, but it's really just the same thing. This right here is just showing you what the camera sees, okay? So if I were to move this camera, it also changes the view of our object. And down here is the dope sheet. The dope sheet is basically just the same as this timeline right here. It's just, it shows your keyframes in more detail. So for example, if I were to add keyframe right here, location and rotation, it shows all this. And this looks very complicated, but trust me, it's really not that complicated. So Overall, you have the summary. This is the timeline, basically, okay? When you put the drop down for the summary, it shows a cube, and the cube has the cube actions, okay? The cube actions is object transforms, and the object transforms are the location and rotation. So all it is is just like a bunch of drop downs until it gets down to what you're actually changing, which is location and rotation. Huh? So if I were to make another keyframe, so I'll move it to like, just like 20 and I'll move my cube over here, um, we'll do a 180, it's random, and I set this keyframe. Now you see that our object has moved and in turn changed this. And you may also notice these like bars going between this. This means that between those two keyframes, that those properties have not changed. So the X location and Z location have not changed. Also, quick note, it says here X Euler rotation. 
Don't even worry the Euler part or whatever. Just know that means rotation. Okay? So we can just play it and see our rotation. Okay, so I deleted my previous keyframes. And the next thing I want to go over is the graph editor. So to open the graph editor in the animation tab, all you need to do is go down here and where the timeline is, press this, click this icon right here, and select graph editor. Okay? And this will open our graph editor. So in the graph editor, um, currently we have no keyframes. So I'm just gonna add, I'm just gonna add keyframes again, real quickly. And then on the second keyframe, I'm just gonna move it up like this. And then set keyframe, location, rotation. Okay. So now we have our keyframe set, and if we open our graph editor, we see this. And so I know this looks very complicated, but the graph editor is very similar to the dope sheet. Okay, so you have the cube, and then cube action, object transform. So you open the object transform, you have the XYZ location and the XYZ rotation. And here, you see that there's these lines connecting the things, and it's color coded. So, for example, since I moved it up, we see that the Z location, it goes up to like a little bit past 5 where I moved it to, and it stays straight afterwards because like we said earlier when you set a keyframe and there's no other keyframes after that the cube or whatever your object is will stay in that same spot okay so as you can see there's these lines right here right and you can see the way that it curves this is called the interpolation mode huh? so basically the best way to understand it is like the way that it moves so it could be for example if I were to right click I could open interpolation mode and these are all the different types of options. Like for example, it could be linear, so it's just a straight line basically, um, constant, um, exponential. Um, these are just different ways that the animation would animate. So if I want to, I could either set one of these automatic interpolation modes, such as like exponential, and when I press play, it moves in an exponential way. However, if I want to change it in my own way, so if I want to make it like sharp at one spot and then like round another spot, I can do that manually. So to do that, right click and change your handle type to free. And then from here, select these small dots and just press G and move them. So let's say I want this cube to go like shoot straight up. Okay, so it's gonna shoot straight up very fast and press play. See that it work. Okay, so let's say I want to create something that looks like the cube is bouncing up and down. All right? So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first add keyframes, and then I'm gonna go into the graph editor, and from there I'm gonna make it look a little more realistic. Okay. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is just press I, location rotation, and set my first keyframe, and I'll move it to about like 10. And then from here I can move it up to about five. Set a keyframe. And move it back to about 10. Okay, so we have these bounces down, and now we're gonna edit it in the graph editor. Alright, so as you can see, we have all these bounces, and they're going up, down, up, down. So these on the bottom, these are all just like the the values that hadn't moved yet so we won't worry about those what we're gonna worry about though is our curves okay so i want it to look a little bit different i'm not really sure how i'm gonna change it but as you can see like it goes up it go i think it's going up a little bit too slow so maybe this will work now it's moving very weird because I changed more values than just the Z location value. So I, I changed the rotation a little bit because of these on the bottom. So when I press play, they all move like that. And the reason for this is because they're all selected. So make sure you un unselect them and then select only the one that you want to change. All right. And then there we go. Now I can actually change it. I'll make it a little more sharp. See how that looks. That's good. So I'm going to try that. All the other curves as well. Okay, so let's see how this looks. It's up and down. It's a little fast over here. So I might just... Okay, I also want to add a rotation. 
So, um, during the points when I get to the top, I'm just gonna add a rotation keyframe. So like right here, 15, rotate by 180. And then we should set that. So now it goes up and it starts spinning. And then when it goes back to here, it spins back to 36. And I rotate Y, 180, set it. And then here, rotate Z by 180. And set it, so let's play. We see that it starts rolling, but it's still very, very fast. I don't, I don't like how fast it's going. So I'm gonna actually space these out just a little bit. Um, yeah, something's off here. <laughs> okay, so this is very rough, but um, I hope you guys understand like the point, like how you can change all these things to make your animation look the way that you want. So the last thing I wanna talk about before I close off the video is the physics tab. So I've already created a video on uh, rigid body, which is one of like the subgroups of physics. And the reason I'm talking about the physics properties is because those are another way to make animations. Like instead of like manually moving parts to make them fly away, you could use rigid body to do that. Or instead of like manually making like a liquid like substance, you use fluid for that. So in the future, I may make more videos on the physics tab. But like I said already, I already made the video on the rigid body. If you want to see that video, um, you go to the cards icon in the top right. It should be there somewhere. But that's all for today's video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Leave any video ideas you guys have in the comments. Um, I'm always open to suggestions. And I always reply to the comments. So with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.